Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Mexico announces limited humanitarian visas for migrant caravan. UK court hears US appeal to extradite WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Report shows 61% rise in violence against indigenous peoples in Brazil. And world leaders arrive in Rome for the G20 summit. In our first story, Mexico has announced that it will grant humanitarian visas to members of a migrant caravan heading north from Chiapas. The visas will be limited to pregnant women and children. They will be valid for one year and will allow people to work and access services like healthcare. Around 4,000 workers reached the town of Villa Comaltitlan in Chiapas on October 27th. The caravan is made up of people from 11 countries, including El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. They are heading to Mexico City under the banner March for Peace, Justice, and Freedom of Migrants. Over the past months, Mexican forces violently pushed back at least four migrant caravans. At least 40,000 people were stranded in Tapachula with little access to services. Most people are demanding safe transit through Mexico to reach the United States. However, U.S. policies like the Migrant Protection Protocols and the discriminatory Title 42 have placed migrants at risk. By September, the U.S. border forces had arrested 1.7 million people along the Mexico border. Human Rights Watch has also documented allegations of abuse by federal agents. Over 160 internal documents between 2016 and 2021 show cases of sexual abuse, discrimination, and violations of due process. Moreover, the Wall Street Journal has reported that the Biden administration is looking at settlements of $450,000 per person to migrant families separated at the border. An estimated 5,500 families were separated under Donald Trump's brutal zero-tolerance policy. The American Civil Liberties Union has stated that many remain separated to this day. 940 families have come forward so far stating that children and parents are suffering from trauma and emotional distress. In our next story, Violence against indigenous communities in Brazil increased by 61% in 2020. 182 people were killed last year as opposed to 2019, which recorded 113 murders. Moreover, there was a 137% increase in the invasion of indigenous territories and the illegal exploitation of resources with 263 cases. Invaders, including miners and loggers, would divide land into lots that would be illegally traded. These included areas where indigenous groups were living in voluntary isolation. These findings are part of a report released by the Catholic Church's Indigenous Missionary Council, or the SIMI. Far-right President Jair Bolsonaro has undertaken a systematic policy of denying indigenous territorial rights while expanding mining and agribusiness. 832 of the 1,289 reservations in Brazil are still awaiting official recognition. The report also includes the impact of COVID-19 on indigenous groups. Official figures only count for deaths on reservations which stand at 900. Meanwhile, one-third of Brazil's 900,000 indigenous peoples live in urban areas. Communities have accused Jair Bolsonaro of indigenous genocide due to the government's mishandling of COVID-19. The charge was ultimately left out of the final Senate committee report approved this week. In our next story, a hearing on the United States' appeal to extradite WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange was concluded on October 28th. District Judge Vanessa Beretsa had blocked Assange's extradition in January this year. She stated that it was unjust and oppressive by reason of Assange's mental health and high suicide risk. The U.S. government has accused him of 18 federal criminal charges. 17 of these are under the Espionage Act and carry a total maximum prison sentence of 175 years. 
Assange is being held without charge at the high-security Belmarsh prison. His partner Stella Morris confirmed that he was denied permission to attend his court hearing in person. U.S. prosecutors presented their appeal of Baretz's decision on five grounds. They claim that Assange would not be isolated at the ADX Florence prison or subjected to special administrative measures. Prosecutors themselves admitted that these assurances were conditional. They then attempted to discredit the expert testimony of psychiatrist Michael Kopelman. Assange's defense team outlined key omissions in the prosecution's argument. They pointed in particular to recent Yahoo News revelations. These showed that the CIA had made serious plans to kidnap and assassinate Assange while he was in the Ecuadorian embassy. They also rejected the prosecution's claims that Assange's relationship with Stella Morris had been hidden from the court. Judge Baretsa was made aware of this before the medical evidence was even filed. Meanwhile, Thousands of people gathered outside the court on October 27th and 28th in solidarity with Assange. London's High Court of Justice is expected to issue a final ruling after deliberation. And for our final story, we go to Italy, where the G20 summit is set to convene on October 30th. The main issues on the agenda will include pandemic recovery, including vaccine distribution. Recent analysis by Airfinity has shown that per capita vaccine supplies to the G20 were three times higher than all other countries combined. Leaders are also expected to discuss rising energy prices and supply chain issues. Moreover, they will also sign off on a 15% global tax rate for corporations. The agreement was finalized by 136 countries earlier this month. However, it was heavily criticized at the time for allowing major exemptions and loopholes. The summit is also expected to discuss the climate crisis as it is being held just before the United Nations Climate Conference or COP26 on October 31st. The G20 alone accounts for 80% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Major protests have been planned in Rome as the summit progresses. Around 10,000 people, including climate activists and trade unions, are expected to participate in a march on Saturday. The Communist Party Rifondazione Communista has also planned a protest. That is all for today's episode. We will be back next week with more stories. Thank you.